Metabolic health impacts every aspect of what makes us who we are. It controls our behavior, it controls our physiology. There are some studies now starting to show that perhaps it has an impact not just on lifespan, but also health span. So it's really the crux of what defines us as sort of healthy or not. My lab is interested in understanding how the brain and the gut communicate with one another and how that communication affects many aspects of an animal's life. How it affects behavior, how it affects physiology, how it affects the metabolic resilience of the animal. We do our experiments primarily on a model system called Cenorhabditis elegans, or C. elegans for short. And it's a tiny microscopic worm. It's about a millimeter in length and is most easily visualized through a microscope. It's comprised of about 20,000 genes within the genome, of which two thirds are conserved in humans, actually. And so the small system is very amenable to molecular genetics and manipulation at the level of individual genes or multiple genes in combination. And so it allows us to look at the roles of individual genes in a particular process, right? So we can have too little or too much of a certain gene and ask what role does it play in this sort of communication between the brain and the metabolism of the body. C. elegans is a relatively new model organism, and from very early on, the founders of the field sort of set the stage for community-driven science with the premise that community-based science lifts not just individual labs or individual avenues of science, but it lifts the scientific enterprise as a whole. It's definitely, in my experience, a very unique group of researchers to be part of. It's quite a privilege. The body of the C. elegans worm is transparent. And so one easy thing that we can do is we can attach fluorescent proteins like green fluorescent protein and so on to a particular gene or protein of interest and watch where it's present in the whole body of the animal. So for example, is it in neurons? Is it in the intestine? And the minute you know something about the anatomy, that is to say where a certain gene is functioning, you can start to generate hypotheses about what its functions might be. You know, if we can achieve a measure of understanding of how the gut, which is a very underappreciated organ, plays a role in driving physiology and behavior and metabolic health overall over the life course in a way that can inform us in terms of making the right choices for what supports both the sensory and hormonal aspects of gut health, then I think we will have come a long, long way towards solving the sort of major metabolic and obesity crisis that not just us, but the rest of the world finds itself in. Working on something that is so foundational to every aspect of human health means any discovery that we make. It's part of a little brick that we might be contributing to a larger structure that helps inform how every aspect of human life has the potential to be improved with the little bit of foundational knowledge that we contribute along with thousands of other scientists.